More now on the upcoming talks between the DPRK and the ROK, that's South Korea. I'm joined by Jim Walsh, an international security expert and a research associate with MIT's Security Studies Program. Thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. The uh, Democratic Republic of Korea shut down the Kaesong complex back uh, in April, and now there are new talks uh, scheduled. It's been sort of stop-stop, these talks, but they're back at the negotiating table right now. What's changed? What's the dynamic behind them coming back to the negotiating table? Well, of course, when we talk about North Korea, the DPRK, uh, there's always a lot of guesswork involved. It's the most opaque country in the world. We really don't know what the inner thinking is. We had all that activity in March and April, tests, provocations and whatnot. And then they seemed at a certain point to sort of turn and, and want to engage, engage Japan, engage China, engage South Korea. Uh, you know, certainly part of the rationale for North Korea has to be that this Kaesong industrial complex is very important to them economically. It's a big source of foreign exchange for the government. Uh, and and this, it's about the longest it's ever been shut down in, in, in its history. And so I would think the North Koreans need every dollar they can get or every won they can get. And so this is uh, a, a real issue for them. Right. And of course, South Korea has also been pushing very hard for this complex to be reopened. Which side gains more from the reopening of the complex? I mean, who has the greater motivation to see things return to the status quo? I think that's exactly the right question to ask. Uh, who's the more motivated? And frankly, I think it's uh, North Korea. Why? Uh, you know, North Korea needs the foreign exchange. They, uh, their economy did in, enjoy a boost this year. New report out this week that says their economy grew by 1.8%. Uh, but still, uh, this is a big source of foreign exchange for them. You know, the South Koreans really don't get that much out of it. I mean, it's more political for them than economic. And frankly, insofar as it was North Korea that shut it down uh, at great cost to those individual companies, many of whom have now pulled out and are not going back because they lost a bunch of money, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be hard for South Korea to make an argument uh, to its own people to start this thing up again. Uh, and so I think the North Koreans need it more than the South Koreans. Yeah, we had a bit of a false start. Uh, that was last month when the both sides were getting ready to reopen these talks, and then they just fell away again. The DPRK saying at the time that it felt like the South delegation was not of a sufficiently um, high level. They wanted, uh, you know, higher level officials to be coming to these talks. Uh, but they're now resuming. And I'm wondering, you know, did China play a role in this? Did it lean on the uh, DPRK to say, listen, you've got to get back to these talks? You know, it's a good question. We don't know the answer to that. They don't reveal those conversations. Uh, my own guess, though, is that China has put its primary uh, emphasis on the six-party talks, not the bilateral talks between North Korea and South Korea. So I would have thought if China was really pushing North Korea, they would have pushed them on rejoining the six-party talks. That hasn't happened yet. But you're right to say, you know, this process has had a lot of false starts. You referred to the dispute over the level of seniority on the delegation. Well, just this week, just in the last two days, we've had additional uh, problems with uh, North Korea saying it also wants to talk about uh, having tours and reunions, and the uh, South Koreans saying, well, well, we can talk about reunions, but not these tours, and then North Korea pulling back. South Korea has changed the head of delegation. Uh, the person who is leading these talks tomorrow is a different person than led them in the previous round, a person who is reported to be taking a tougher line, uh, who is uh, alleged to be pushing the North Koreans more. So, you know, I, I don't think we can have a ton of optimism about this. Uh, it hasn't shown a lot of uh, momentum so far, and, and it doesn't look like there's much momentum this week either. Okay, sir. We shall see where it all goes. Jim Walsh from Boston. Thanks.